In the last video, we saw two different ways to assign oxidation states. The first way of doing it was the general chemistry way, memorizing your rules for assigning oxidation states. The second way was the organic chemistry way, where you draw the dot structure, account for electronegativity, and use this formula to figure out the oxidation state. The ox the oxidation state is equal to the number of valence electrons that the atom would have um, normally. And from that, you would subtract the number of valence electrons that you have around the atom after you account for electronegativity. And the second way of doing it is much better for more complicated organic chemistry molecules. Let's take a look at one of those more complicated organic chemistry molecules, and let's see if we can assign some oxidation states. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the dot structure for a molecule called acetaldehyde, or ethanol. And this is the dot structure for ethanol. And when we're using this organic chemistry way of assigning oxidation states, we need to go ahead and draw in all of our electrons so we can, we can better see what happens to them when we think about electronegativity. So I'm drawing in all of my electrons on ethanol. And Let's think about assigning oxidation states to carbon. So if I wanted to assign an oxidation state to the carbon over here on the left, I first have to think about the electronegativity difference between this carbon and these hydrogens that are surrounding this carbon. Well, we know that carbon's a little bit more electronegative than hydrogen, so we're going to treat these like ionic bonds, even though obviously they are covalent. So if they're ionic bonds, that means carbon being a little bit more electronegative, carbon's going to get all these electrons from these hydrogens. So if I, if I think about carbon is going to get all of these electrons, so carbon's going to get these electrons, carbon's going to get these electrons, carbon's going to get these electrons. What about the two electrons between these two carbon atoms, right? So the carbon atom we're talking about and then this carbon atom. Well, since they have the exact same electronegativity, each carbon's going to get one of those electrons. So the carbon that we are now talking about is going to get that electron right there. I apply my formula, the number of valence electrons that carbon normally has, that's of course four. From that number, we're going to subtract the number of electrons around that carbon after we've accounted for electronegativity. So all we do is count the electrons that we have circled here. So that's two, four, six, seven. So four minus seven gives us an oxidation state of negative three. So that carbon has an oxidation state of negative three. What about the carbon over here on the right? So what's this oxidation state? Well. Once again, we think about electronegativity differences. And I already know that this carbon over here on the right is going to get this electron. What about the two electrons in the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen? We've seen carbon's more electronegative, so it's going to get those two electrons. And the electrons in a double bond between carbon and oxygen, oxygen's much more electronegative than carbon. So oxygen's going to take all four of these electrons in this double bond. So we can't say those electrons are around carbon now. So carbon has three electrons surrounding it. Carbon normally has a valence, four valence electrons. So if I were to assign an oxidation state to this carbon. There's normally four valence electrons around carbon. It has three electrons around it after we've accounted for electronegativity. So it has an oxidation state of plus one. So let's let's draw a product. So let's let's do an actual organic chemistry reaction where we're converting the molecule on the left into the molecule on the right. So I'm going to draw acetic acid. So let's go ahead and draw acetic acid over here. And let's assign oxidation states to acetic acid. And then we can figure out what type of reaction the molecule underwent. So here we have over here, this is acetic acid on the right, and ethanol or acetaldehyde on the left. And once again, we need to assign our oxidation states. So we need to draw in all of our electrons in order to better understand what happened to the carbon atoms in this reaction. So let's draw in all of our electrons over here on acetic acid. So something like that. Okay, let's assign oxidation states to our carbon again. So I'm going to focus in on this carbon. And once again, 
this this carbon is going to get these electrons, it's going to get these electrons, it's going to get these electrons, and it's going to get this one electron here. So it's the exact same situation as on the left. So it'd be 4 minus 7 again for an oxidation state of negative 3, which is the exact same number we got on the left side. So there was no change in the oxidation state of the carbon on the left. What about the carbon on the right over here? So what about this carbon? Well, if I were to assign an oxidation state to this carbon, once again, it gets this electron. But now, what happened? I, I've added on this oxygen here, and this oxygen is more electronegative than this carbon. So oxygen is going to steal the two electrons in the bond between it and carbon, because we treat these like ionic bonds. So carbon doesn't get any of those electrons. And in the double bond up top here, just like before, the top oxygen is much more electronegative, so it steals all of those electrons. So this carbon doesn't get any of those electrons either. So it only gets the one electron from this bond over here. So if I were to assign an oxidation state to this carbon, carbon normally has four valence electrons. It has only one electron around it after we account for our electronegativity. So it has an oxidation state of plus three. And this is a change from the example on the left. So over here on the left, we had an oxidation state of plus one. Over here on the right, we have an oxidation state of plus three. So we have an increase in the oxidation state of that carbon. And we saw in the last video that an increase in the oxidation state means that carbon was oxidized in this reaction. So this is an oxidation reaction. So an oxidation reaction. So if you're oxidizing ethanol or acid aldehyde, you would get acetic acid as your product. So this is a very, very powerful way of figuring out um, oxidation states for organic chemistry molecules. Let's do a complicated organic chemistry molecule, uh, even more complicated, and let's see how we can apply it some more. So let's draw, let's draw, let's see, let's draw a ring of five carbons here. And let's put in some double bonds here and here. And we'll put hydrogens coming off of our carbons, like that. And I'm also going to put in an extra lone pair of electrons on this carbon right here. And let's go ahead and um, put in all the electrons on our bonds again, because we're going to be assigning oxidation states, of course. So let's go ahead and draw in all of these electrons in these bonds here. So let's put in all of our electrons. And, and this molecule is actually an ion. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll assign a formal charge to this molecule first, and then we'll assign oxidation states. And it'll be a good way of comparing the difference between formal charge and oxidation states, because the two are actually very similar to each other. So first, let's assign formal charge. And we're going to focus in on the carbon at the top. So let's use a different color here for formal charge, just so we don't confuse formal charge with oxidation states. OK, so if I wanted to assign a formal charge, formal charge to the carbon on the top here, I would treat these bonds as being covalent bonds. So if I were to treat these bonds as being covalent bonds, then this bond between carbon and hydrogen would be shared equally. So I would go like this. And the formula for formal charge is pretty much the same thing as the formula for oxidation states, right? You take the number of valence electrons that the atom normally has, so carbon normally has four, and then from that you subtract the number of electrons uh, that you've just assigned to that atom. So how many electrons are surrounding that carbon now? Well, there's one two, three, four, five in that circle I drew. So four minus five would give me negative one. So this carbon actually has a formal charge of negative one. So there's a negative charge on this molecule. So this is, this is an anion. This is the cyclopentadienyl ion or anion. It's negatively charged, and, and that's the concept of formal charge. Let's switch back to oxidation states now. So with oxidation states, we treat the bonds as being ionic. So instead of carbon sharing, uh, these electrons between carbon and hydrogen. If I'm assigning an oxidation state to this carbon, I'll use blue, it's going to steal that electron. And then when I'm comparing these two carbons, same value for electronegativity, comparing these two carbons, same value for electronegativity. So if I wanted to assign an oxidation state to that carbon, right? so an oxidation state to that carbon, it would be the number of valence electrons carbon usually has, which is four. From that, you subtract the number of electrons 
um, around it, right? So now we have, there's an extra electron in that blue circle, right? So it's two, four, five. It's 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 two, four, six. So we have four minus six, giving us an oxidation state of negative two. So this carbon right here has an oxidation state of negative two. Let's look at the other carbons around our ring. So let's focus in on this carbon down here. So once again, we're going to treat it like an ionic bond. So carbon's going to steal those electrons. Carbon has the same electronegativity as another atom of carbon, of course. So it shares all of these electrons. So I think about what is the oxidation state of that carbon? Well, normally four valence electrons. How many valence electrons are around it? One, two, three, four, five. So four minus five gives us negative one for that oxidation state. And you can see as I go around the ring here, it's the exact same situation, right? There's five electrons around that carbon, so four minus five gets that negative one, and assigning more oxidation states, it's the exact same thing here, so negative one, and then for this carbon, same thing, right? There are five electrons around it, so negative one. So I have one carbon with an oxidation state of negative one, and I have four carbons with an oxidation state of, um, of, of negative one, and, and the top one has an oxidation state of negative two. So I have different oxidation states for different carbons in the atom. And, and sometimes, instead of the individual oxidation states represented this way, you'll see what are called fractional oxidation states. And so for the cyclopentadienyl anion, you'll see a fractional oxidation state of negative 6 fifths, which confuses students a lot, because they're like, where did that number come from, right? A fractional oxidation state of negative 6 fifths. And where it comes from is doing the organic way of assigning your oxidation states, and then adding up your, your total oxidation state. So let's see what we have here. We have negative 2 here. So negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and negative 1. So that's, that's the total of negative 6, right? That's the total of negative 6. That's where the negative 6 number comes from. The 5 comes from the fact that there are 5 carbons in this molecule. So negative 6 divided by 5 gives you a fractional oxidation state. So it's actually a whole number for the oxidation state of these carbons, but sometimes it's expressed in the fractional oxidation state. And that was something that always confused me when I, when I was when I was an undergraduate, and so I hope this clears up some misconceptions about fractional oxidation states. So use this organic way of assigning oxidation numbers, and uh, it makes your life a lot easier with complicated molecules.